this happens. <sighs> Jesus, uh, it's not that cold. Ah. Yep, today will not be better. So I went again on the river, I started with a small crankbait that will come on a pack of six. They are very very cheap, but they work. Uh, I started with this one and I moved a little bit down the creek. Even though you see a lot of fish in here, they are not biting, they are not feeding, they are just preparing to spawn. <sighs> I'm having some follow-ups casting upstream. So, as I was saying, the fish are not very interested in feeding. They are just fending off threats or going after easy meals. Ah, Jesus. One down, five more to go. Still have more of this lure, so I will try. I'm putting a flasher color. I only had one bite until now. So, because of the conditions that the fish can tell where I'm getting on the bank and they all get spooked, I had to resume to the water pipe where they cannot tell that I'm there. Oh, it's a fish. And immediately I had a bite. It was a big, ah. big fellow. You see me fighting it. It's very difficult because this is a very light rod, but I had no problem dealing with it. But I will commit a very, very stupid mistake. But don't go there, piece of as, trash. As you will see right now, the fish is very smart. He's going for the brushes. He's trying to go for cover. And me being stupid, instead of taking the fish out of there first and putting the head above the water, I tried to grab my net. And it was a very stupid mistake because I gave time for the fish to fight in the cover and ah. he took the hook out of his mouth. Jesus. This one know what he was doing because the type of fight he was he was pulling was very smart. Was smarter than me and that's for sure. Let's go upstream again. So, as on the water pipe, I have some cover from spooking the fish because I have uh, rocks where I'm standing. I have a waterfall on my right, and that dampens a little bit of the sound and vibrations that I make. And I have a deep pocket right after the tree that you see there, that tree stump. Hey, this is a trashy one. As soon as I say trashy, he stopped fighting. Jesus, no one wants to cooperate with me. How the heck? So, nice fish, nice fight, and you can go about your life. One thing I can tell you about this rod, the motorol draw, it's that uh, cast weight. It can go a bit uh. higher than the 1.5 grams that they say. I will have no problem dealing with 3 to 5 grams with it. If you don't trash it, you have no problems with that type of weight. So, difficult hook set with this lure, but easy to take it out. I like to make it easier to dig it out because, you know, the fish are the most valuable thing a fisherman has. I think it's trash. It's coming too fast. Yeah, it's trash. Jesus. I was running so much out of time trying to catch another fish instead of this piece of trash that I didn't even have time to film an outro but I can tell you that this is an excellent rod if you want to go wading you can even 
throw with no problems any type of trout crankbaits and trout jerks because this rod can go up until 5 grams with no problem even though the cast weight that it's on the rod says 1.5 gram don't bother with it you will have no problem whatsoever uh, throwing that type of weights uh, maybe just don't whip it too hard uh, it deals with the fish very 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 good for the type of size and you will have a lot of fun because it's uh, so much of a tin rod it will bend a lot you will have a lot of feel and it's a lot faster action than the illusion and that i like because the illusion it will be a rod that i will be using probably during the dreadful hit where i will be only catching dinks but i will be catching a lot of them on a very very small maybe one inch tanta and this one will be very very good for my spring and autumn uh, fishing because i can go with a bit bigger weights after some bit bigger fish so until the next video, I will see you guys next time.